Hello and welcome back to chapter 6. Today we're going to look at section 6.2 which deals with law of cosines. And as we talked about back in chapter or section 6.1, we are in the process right now of solving oblique triangles, which means we do not have a right angle, and we need to have um, at least one side length and some of the following, either two side lengths, two angles, or a side length and an angle. And by using the previous combinations, we either get angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, side, side, angle, side, 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 or side, angle, side. Now back in 6.1, these right here dealt with law of sines. Today we're going to be dealing with these two, which deals with law of cosines. And the difference between the two of these is when we look at side, 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 and side, angle, side, we do not have enough information to solve for the law of sines. So um, therefore we have to use the law of cosines. Our law of cosines looks something like this. It says that we can take side a, squ or a squared is going to equal to side length b squared plus side length c squared minus 2 times side length b times side length c times the cosine of a. So in other words, the side length that you're looking for is the cosine, we're going to be taking the cosine of that same angle. Okay, and it's the same pattern, we're going to look at side length B and side length C. So this right here, if you memorize one of these, then these are just variations of that same equation. Likewise, if we're trying to find an angle, okay, and if I were you, I would probably just memorize this, I mean, that, this is actually what I do, only memorize this equation and you can derive this. If I want to solve for this angle here, all I have to do is get rid of these two side lengths and then the 2BC. So in other words, I'm going to take my side lengths up here, divide by 2 times the side length, and that gives me cosine of A. And then again, in order to solve for just angle A itself, we're going to have to take the inverse cosine. And we will be doing some examples that deals with this. So for example one, we want to find the three angles of triangle ABC. We're given that side length A is 6, B is 8, and C is 12. So as you'll notice, we cannot use a law of sines because we are not given at least one angle. Therefore, we have to use the law of cosines. So our law of cosines says A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of a. Now when you're dealing with the law of cosines, you typically want to find the angle that is opposite of the longest side. And you want to do this because this is going to tell you whether or not you're dealing with an acute triangle or an obtuse triangle. So my longest side is 12, which means I'm going to be finding angle c. So if I want to find angle c, I'm going to rewrite this as c squared equals a squared plus b squared, because it's a two side lengths that I'm not looking for, minus 2ab times a cosine of the angle that corresponds to this, which would be c. And now, in order to solve for angle c, I have the cosine of c is equal to, I'm going to have c squared, and I'm going to move these two over, so minus a squared minus b squared, and then I'm going to be dividing by a negative 2ab. So now all I have to do is plug in my corresponding pieces. The cosine of c is equal to c squared, which is 144, that's 12 squared, minus a squared, which is 6, so 6 squared is 36, minus b squared, which is a squared, or 64, and we're going to divide that by a negative 2, times a, which is 6, times b, which is 8. And when we simplify this, we end up with 44 divided by a negative 96, which will reduce down to a negative 11 24 So now in order to solve for angle C, we're going to take the inverse cosine of a negative 11 24 Please make sure you are in degree mode. 
and you'll see that we end up with 117.3 degrees. So this is 117.3 degrees, which tells us we do have an obtuse angle. And you can continue to do this for angle B and angle A, or now we have one angle with an opposite side length, so now I can go ahead and use the law of sines, which is what I'm going to do. So law of sines says that if we have the sine of 117.3 degrees, and we divide that by side length C, which is 12, this is going to be the same thing as the sine of A divided by 6. So this tells me then when I multiply and divide and do my inverse sine, I end up with angle A is equal to 26.4 degrees. And then I'm going to have to do the same thing for angle B. And angle B, I'm still going to use the sine of 117.3 divided by 12 and set that equal to the sine of B divided by 8. And this tells me that angle B then is equal to 36.3 degrees. Or you could have done 180 minus the previous two angles too. It's all, um, all pretty much one and the same. And so now I've solved for all three angles. For example two, we're going to find the remaining sides and angles of the given triangle. So triangle ABC, you'll notice here we have two side lengths and an angle. We can't use the side or the law of sines because I don't have an, a side length that is opposite of my given angle. So I'm going to have to find that before I can use the law of sines. So I'm going to be looking for side length A, and this is going to equal B squared, which is 16 squared, plus C squared, which is 12 squared, minus 2 times 16 times 12 times the cosine of 80 degrees. Again, you must be in degree mode. So when you simplify that and square root it, You'll see that A then is equal to 18.26. So we can write that in, 18.26. Now I have an angle and an opposing side. So I can go ahead and find one of my other angles by using the law of sines. So the sine of 80 degrees divided by, and you may even want to store this um, length here, so I'm going to divide that by 18.26, and that's going to equal the sine of, and you can do B or C. I'm going to do angle C in this case. I'm going to divide that by 12, and this tells me that angle C then is equal to 40.34 degrees. And if I want to go ahead and find angle B then, We'll say B, or for angle B, I have 180 minus 40.34 minus my original 80, which is going to give me 59.6 degrees. And this then would be angle B. And I've now sol um, solved for my extra side and my other two angles. Example 3 says, in a softball game, the batter hits a ball to center field. The center fielder throws the ball to third base, and you're given that the distance from the center fielder to home plate is 240 feet. The distance between the bases is 60 feet. We want to calculate how far did the center fielder throw the ball. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out by sketching a picture. Okay, so if I have something like this, this being first second, third plate, and then this would be home. Okay, we are told that your center field, or your batter hits a ball to center field. So let's just put a point out here to center field and we'll color that red. So this is our center fielder. 
So we know that our ball is going this distance here, and we know that that is 240 feet. We're told that the distance between the bases is 60 feet. Therefore, we know that this distance here is 60 feet. Um, and to second base, we have 60 feet. Um, but what we want to know is how far did the center fielder throw the ball? And I apologize, it's not through the ball, he threw the ball. So essentially what we're looking for is this distance right here from third base to center field. Now the only thing that we do know that we're going to have to kind of assume is a baseball field or softball field is set up so that everything is on 90 degrees. Well this toss right here is actually going to be splitting our 90 degree angle in half. So we do know or we can make the assumption that this is 45 degrees here. So what we've really got is we have a side length here, an angle, and a side length. So I'm going to use that piece of information to solve for my distance, and we'll call this distance D. So we'll say that D, and this will be D squared, is equal to the sum of the other two side angle or side lengths, which is 60 squared plus 240 squared minus 2 times 60 times 240 times a cosine of that given angle or 45 degrees. Now when you simplify that and you square root it, we end up with D, or your distance, is equal to about 202.1 feet. So that throw from center fielder to home plate was about 202 feet. Example 4 says, a ship travels 40 miles due east and changes direction. When the ship has traveled 30 miles, it is 56 miles from its point of departure. We want to describe the bearing from point B to C. So if we sketch what we know, we're going to start here at A. We know that we're going due east 40 miles. And we'll call this to point B. And then it says we change direction and we're going to go a distance of 30 miles. And this here is going to be point C. And we're told that we are 56 miles from our point of departure. So we know that this is 56 miles. We want to describe the bearing from point B to C. So in other words, we are concerned with finding angle B. So we want to find that, first of all. And the cosine of B is going to equal our 40 squared plus 30 squared minus 56 squared divided by 2 times 40 times 30 so when we go and we actually calculate angle B B is going to equal 105.4 degrees now the question is actually asking us to describe the bearing. So when you look at this angle here, we're, we know that this is 105.4 degrees. And if you recall, a bearing is actually measured off your north-south line. And it's an acute angle. So the acute angle off this north-south line is really this angle in here. So to find that angle, so this is for a bearing angle. We're going to take our 105.4 and we're going to subtract 90 degrees and this gives us that we have 15.4 degrees. Now that 15.4 degrees is to the east of the north line. So we say 
that our bearings are going to be 15.4 degrees east of north. And this right here then is our correct bearings. The last thing we have to talk about in section 6.2 is called Heron's fo area formula. And it says that if we're given any triangle with three side lengths, and you have to know all three side lengths, they're A, B, and C, then we say that the area can be found by using the equation of the square root of the S times S minus the side length A times S minus side length B times S minus side length C. And we're told that we can actually calculate S by taking the sum of A plus B plus C and dividing that by 2. And this is a formula that you will have to know for your chapter 6 test. So please uh, kind of start to remember this or keep that in mind as we go ahead and do your homework problems. And our last example then says to find the area of the triangle with side lengths that measure 5, 9, and 8 feet. Well, in order to find our area of a triangle that has three side lengths, I first have to find S. And S is going to equal 5 plus 9 plus 8 divided by 2. And that's going to give us 22 divided by 2, or 11. So now when I go to calculate my area, my area is going to equal the square root of 11 times 11 minus 5 times 11 minus 9 times 11 minus 8, which equals the square root of 11 times 6 times 2 times 3, which gives us the square root of 196, which is approximately equal to 19.9 square feet. And this example concludes our 6.2 section, but we do have a practice problem. So our practice homework says to solve the given triangle where side length A is 10.4, B is 18, and C is 21.9. Now you're going to solve each um, angle, so angles A, B, and C, and uh, I will be coming around and checking this tomorrow in class. So on that note, I hope you guys have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.